the story of it is also that Bill scared the bejesus out of us. Yeah. And uh, we were having our annual meeting, pleasant. and uh, he kind of we were kind of coming to a close. And he said there was another reason we all were kind of gathered here today. Um, you know, I also. Uh, I did sell the company, and I wanted to introduce you all to the new owners. And he did this little move to the door as if he was going to open the door and introduce someone to us. And everyone took their hats off and looked around like, like holy Toledo. We're, we're, going, going, to Budweiser. we're going to Budweiser. Yeah. Some, some big wig's buying us out. Um, and then he faked that and said, the new owners are you all. Are you a brew head? I'm a brew head. Are you a brew head? I'm a brew head. Y'all a brew heads? Yeah, we brew heads. So pour a glass of craft beer. We can do this. Yeah. What's good, y'all? This is C Certified Brew, and welcome to episode 127 of Beer and Other Shit, the podcast. This afternoon, we are in my favorite place on the planet, Burlington, Vermont. Or oh, technically, it's Shelburne, right? No, Burlington. Is it, it is Burlington? Yeah. Okay, sick. South End. Yeah, represent. Uh, we are at Switchback Brewery, and we have Alex Brewer and Sarah Taproom Manager hanging out today, guys. Thank you so much for your time. Of course. Appreciate it. Pleasure to be here. I haven't been back since I was telling uh, Amy before. When I first, first came to Vermont in 2016, it was one of the first breweries I came to, so it was nice to, uh, to get back and do it properly. This place is huge. I was very surprised at how large the facility is. Every year I feel it grows. When I was yep. uh, first here a few years ago, there was walls up everywhere behind the brewery. You took the tour, um, yeah, yeah. and it's just been knocking walls down, add a little bit more here, a little <laughs> bit more there. We got the cooler a couple years ago. Nice. Uh, so yeah, it's something that just happens on a yearly basis and can it's never prepare sign. for yeah, how right? big you're going to get, I guess. Is there much more room to move back there, or is like, can you like keep pushing those walls back? Uh, <clears throat> or is it like I think we're starting to feel yeah. our elbows a little bit, but you know <laughs> we definitely find the space when we need to make it. Right. We're very very creative with the way that we uh, utilize the space that we have. We've got right. a lot of good brains working on that always. Clearly, right? Yeah, there. yeah. Um, perfect. So let's get into your beer story. So how you got into beer? Would you like to start? Sarah, I mean, as the young end, I guess I'll yeah. I'll jump in. Um, I mean, I was. Uh, I started bartending in New York um, when I was going to school, and pretty much what I knew was just that I enjoyed drinking beer, um, and that was kind of where where it started, as it usually does. Um, and I knew I, I liked drinking beer with a little with a little oomph to it, you know, a little body, a little character. I wasn't just drinking beer to you know go crazy. I was really wanting to you know kind of like what Alex said, be able to sit around with friends and enjoy what we're drinking. Um, so when I moved to Vermont, I knew it was kind of it was a little bit of an added bonus knowing that this was a uh, kind of the the beer capital of the world so right? i'd say That's um, awesome. absolutely and uh and um i found myself at you know at a brewery that that was their focus it was always the integrity of the beer that came before anything else right. um, and so that's when I really started to explore the dimensions of beer and um, while I was bartending in New York I knew that you know wine was something that you could explore and really develop a knowledge for um, but I knew that there was uh, an avenue for beer to do that as well and so um, when I found myself in the brewing industry um, it was it was an awesome opportunity especially here where um, we really at Switchback value the educational part of things. And, you know, we're, we're here to, to drink our beer and enjoy it, but also to kind of know where it's coming from, know the history, um, know the tradition of the beer, um, you know. And so I just couldn't stay away. Yeah, fair was, enough. And every day I was coming to work learning something new, and, and that's how you know it's an awesome place to be. Oh, so. yeah. The best place to do it as yeah. well. The state is amazing. I, have, I wanted to uh, I want to join, like, Quebec and Vermont and just, like bring you guys into Canada. It's be a lot easier for us like, to try and stop muling and stuff across the border. Quebec yeah. is amazing. I go there. I'm about half an hour away from the border myself, so nice. my wife and I you pop up again? all the time, yeah. and it's just, it's incredible the stuff that they're doing up there these days. So. It's very, I feel like I'd like to see more, there's not enough, maybe I'm missing something, I don't feel like there's enough collaboration. I know all you guys go out there to drink, we go home down here to drink, yeah. but like, I, I wonder if people are working together. I, don't, I just don't know if the, if the the scenes are connected yeah. enough more than I would like it to be more 
as a selfish for the drinking side, like it's no, yeah, I mean, more collabs I know that and like there are some breweries that come down for I mean like the Vermont Brewers Association hosts uh, the Waterfront Festival in Burlington. Is that the July um, one? In July, yeah, 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 it's usually the third weekend of July. Um, and I know we get um, should go this year. some brewers from um, Quebec that come down and and you know we're able to kind of have those conversations oh, and, and share what we're doing. Um, but definitely, if we could. Accentuate that and, and kind of yeah make make those trips a little bit easier. Yeah, um, that, would, that would be awesome. Yeah, how did you get into beer? So hard to follow your act, um, <laughs> but uh, kind of similar. So I was a bartender actually in DC uh, for a brew pub, um, and really really liked just like the whole scene of beer. You know, tasting, experiencing it. Our uh, brewmaster was a level three Cicerone, oh, wow. uh, which is just insane. There's probably less Navy SEALs in the world than <laughs> of level three Cicerones. I think you're right. Seriously. So, yeah. Yeah. so you just had like an amazing knowledge and just this passion for it. Really wanted to make me like kind of get back there and start doing it. Right. Uh, so I did it a couple days a week. I was kind of the grunt that, you know, raked out the malt or like changed the kegs or like did anything like that. What's that but, code against Selimin, right? Is that Selimin? So a Selimin here is what uh, kind of takes care of the beer. So brewers are going to oh. brew it and then through its growing up cycle, uh, the Selimin take care of it. So they're kind of the fathers and mothers of it. <laughs> That's they make sure that beautiful. it grows up the way that it should, make sure that the yeast it's is distributed and everything I in. I love that. Uh, you know. I didn't know that. And then yeah, then so, when they hand it off to production, they package it. So what what the work that you were doing? Sorry to cut you off there. What what was that called? Is that just like the cleaner? So what I yeah, I was essentially yeah janitor the grunt the the, the grunt like, yeah you meant that okay yeah it's collective child care though you know? exactly everybody's job is important care. you know no absolutely cleaning is uh, what do they say cleaning is extra godliness for for yeah. beer or the two things, things you want to hear as a brewer is hey your beer is great and your brewery is clean because those are the two things that are hardest um, in there you know there's yeah. a lot of things in a brewery that you know can be. Uh, very gross, you know. Yeast, of course, is a living organism. It's going to grow up. It's going to do what it wants. And uh, you know, wort and beer is very sticky. So you're you're going to have to get that clean, and so you can get it in there for the next process. Uh, but I did that for a while, and uh, absolutely hated DC. Uh, not a big fan of uh, cities. That's why I came up to Vermont. Fair enough. And uh, you know, started looking around for breweries here that I wanted to work for. Switchback was, of course, number one. Uh, just based on, you know, their whole, like, family model, the way that they do things here is just amazing. You know, all of our beers are unfiltered. They're naturally carbonated. They're the way beer should be done. Right. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And when was that? That oh, was uh, four years ago. So, Three yeah, ways? four years with uh, Switchback now. Nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well done. And how long have you yeah. been there, Sarah? Um, almost oh, you said three, three right? Almost, almost three. three, yeah. Mm. Coming okay. up on my anniversary on Saturday, actually. Oh, yeah. What are, we we what, are you, what are you doing for us? What's going uh, on? We're actually having our annual holiday party. So <laughs> well, that's very convenient. The whole, everyone's going to be celebrating but... with me. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the hospitality it's industry is like kind of always party late. for us. So. It's all over the place. Yeah, right? we do things when we can. Yeah, yeah. when you can. <laughs> okay, amazing. So then, can you guys speak to the history of Switchback itself? Like how the brewery came about with the owners and stuff? I mean, it all started with the man himself, Bill Cherry. Yeah, um, Bill's the yeah. one. Bill's the man. Bill's the man. Um, okay. Coming off of um, being the head brewer at Boulevard Brewing Company out in Kansas City, Missouri. No way. Um, Do you know that? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Like, oh. We get them in um, Toronto sometimes. They get uh, some of the big, like the barley wines or the stouts in there. No doubt. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. They still have a lot of his the recipes heat. there to uh, wow. to this day. No yeah. way. Yeah. That's that's very cool connection. Yeah. Heck yeah. All right. Yeah, so he was honing his craft, you know. Um, but like I kind of mentioned when we were talking about the flagship, he mm -hmm. was just, he was looking to make something that was just a balanced, approachable beer for people, something that you could sit around and kind of never get tired of. Um, so he came out to Vermont and was, you know, working on this recipe for a few years. And in 2002, he honed it in um, and he started brewing the Switchback Ale um, and was pretty much cranking away just by himself. Brewing the beer um, in this facility here. Heart and soul. This facility, yeah. Um, it was him and two others um, with. back then, and you know, Bill. Bill originally went to school um, for like quality assurance and like food sciences, okay. microbiology, brute science. He's a very, very well versed man in the field. Uh, so when he started working here, this wasn't Switchback. Obviously, it was McKenzie, the people okay. who used to package uh, meat and everything here. So he did. Food uh, quality assurance for them for a little while. In this facility? In this facility. Oh, this is what it used to be. Yeah, yeah. And he just worked for them. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's, that's cool. So he did their quality assurance for a long time, and uh, they decided that they wanted to move out of this facility. So he was kind of at a crossroads. He didn't know what he wanted to do. But, you know, he looked around the brewery, and he saw tall ceilings. He saw drains in the floor. He saw a perfect opportunity to open a brewery. Right, really. So. The rain is all the, all the hard work is kind of done, the plumbing yeah. and stuff. Yeah. All right. So that's what he did. He started it up, and uh, back then it was three of them. They were working like 12 to 16-hour days. Uh, when you're a new brewery in Vermont, it's really hard to get your name out there. I bet. There's a yeah. lot of competition. Uh, even so back then? Him? Even back then. Oh, 17 yeah. years ago? Like, yeah. Because you got to think, these days, we're still the brewery capita of you know the United States. We have more breweries sure. than any. Yeah, right? More brewery per capita. But anyway. Way, way more. I mean, yeah. Vermont's only 630,000 people. It's crazy. <laughs> we got, what, almost 80 breweries now? Yeah. So there's quite yeah, a bit. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Love it. God, this place is awesome. <laughs> makes me so happy to be here. So, yeah, that's what he was doing. He was working with uh, Chris Dooley. Um, he's one of our older employees, the guy who was uh, the ambition of Dooley's Bladed Pour. That's personally my favorite beer that we do here. Okay. Um, and it was Gretchen Latchfield. She is our uh, plant engineer. She is the heart of Switchback. Uh, she makes sure that we're running on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, all the machines here, she's here every single day making sure everything is where it should be. It's her birthday today. It's her birthday <laughs> Shout today. Shout out to Gretchen. Yeah, happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> she also keeps all the animals that work here in line, which in itself is a big job. So we're very okay. happy to have her. <laughs> That's dope. And so that was uh, so that was 2002, and I guess as the brewery and the name would have came out with the, with the ale to start yeah. with, um, and then just rolling out. I mean, pack, did it start with packaging, or was it like a brew pub, like a tap room type of situation? It was just, we were pretty much just distributing in kegs. Um, and okay. that was okay. And that was, you know, like Alex said, you're, it's, it's, constant work to be to be getting your name out there and so bill was actually one of those people that was going out to bars trying to sell switch back to bars um and you know when you have a when you have a, a half barrel keg um you know it's about 140 pints so if you're trying to sell this new beer to somebody that's going to be 140 pints they're kind of like this new yeah, beer that yeah. they've never had is this going to be worth it is that um, sorry to cut you is a half no, barrel okay. keg because in canada we go metric is that like a 50 liter keg like the big guys the big ones the yeah. big ones 50 yeah, liters known as a half that. barrel eh? yeah that's a so barrel is how we measure things in the brewing yeah, so world the half liters. barrel is going to be how they measure things in like the distributing world so okay. yeah right yeah okay thank you yeah. and how many gallons to a barrel or half barrel so it's 15 and a half gallons mm. to a half barrel. So 30. Barrel. And then double and then that 30, for a barrel. 31. 15 and a half gallons is like yep. 4 liters to a gallon. All right, do you do you math, guys? Like, all right. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. So I got to do it in my head all the time, miles, kilometers. Like, it's yeah, whole, right. It's always a whole thing. <laughs> I know. We, shouldn't we just get on it? Should I mean, yeah, I don't know. Right? We're the only people that are literally the only one in the entire world. It's kind of fun. Though. I mean, yeah. hey, if Vermont goes up to Quebec, we might just, yeah. we're getting I, there. I think I need to start the movement. Like, yeah, like just, it'll just be learn easier. metric in school and then we'll be that much closer to <laughs> right? getting up yeah. there. It's an invisible line. Like, who cares? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Whatever. Who made it up? Oh, yeah. It wasn't me. It wasn't us. Yeah. So kegs, but, the so, half yeah. kegs. He's selling kegs uh, to bars, um, and you know, he's trying to trying to convince them that this is going to be a beer that sells. Right, right. Um, so that was kind of a you know, it, it was a tough beginning to, to get through. And also, when he's coming back and brewing for sixteen hours, long long rocky start, you know. Yeah. Uh, but eventually, they decided to to take some of their savings that they had and invest in a couple of the smaller kegs, which we okay. call sixths or logs, which are like the 30 liter, 20 about, liter ones? Yeah, Sixths, logs, different people call them different things. Five gallons or so. Or, it's like a homebrew set. Actually, you know what? Yeah. yeah. I think that's about that, right. the 30 liter, yeah. the 20 liter. They're liters, about 40 whatever. beers. Yeah. So 40 yeah. beers, a lot easier to sell than 140 beers. So this way, a lot of the bars in the area were like, oh yeah, sure, we'll try that beer. So and that's, that's what changed kind of, the game, eh? That's really what, what oh. helped us kind of get off the ground in that respect in terms of people being willing to try this new beer. And then after that, it was all a matter of word of mouth. Yeah. Because once you try Switchback, I mean, your glass is empty, right? Oh, once like, you try yeah. Switchback, it's 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 it hard to sell. say no, yeah. you know? <laughs> it's um, definitely a it's, crush, I want more. Yeah. And, and it's always a beer that people come back to, especially in a, in a market where there's so many options. You just want kind of a, a go-to. And so ultimately it became a really good go-to, especially for people in Vermont. Right. And so bartenders, when people would ask, oh, what's good, you know? Oh, you can't go wrong with Switchback. Right. And so that was part of what got our momentum really, really off the ground. 
um, was being able to kind of s- sell a smaller amount. And then people were like, oh, no, give me 140 pints, you know, give me that right. bigger keg. And so that's what really, really got us going. And I mean, of course, in return, that meant longer days yeah. and more, more brewing. Brews, yeah, yeah. Um, and so and it was, it's kind of always been a slow and steady progression in terms of we're only we bring people in, um, you know, that are obviously committed to what we're doing, but also that are willing to put in those hours. Right. Um, so I think the next employee was Tony, who's still one of our brewers here today. A head brewer, 12 yeah. years now. Yep. So, wow. Yeah. So people, this is the type of place people stick around. For sure. Yeah. I mean, we, uh, we're constantly growing, you know, as far as... Uh, departments go because there's a couple of different departments here you have obviously your brewing uh, you have your production side of it everybody yep. that's going to package it up and get it out um, you have a cellarman the people of course are the the, 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 uh, the razors and fathers, the, yeah the and the then you sisters. have our our tap room who's of course like killing Cousins. it no, I'm kidding. <laughs> and uh, our office and our right. obviously our marketers people who are getting it out to all of our other states so mm-hmm. we're probably a very very small crew right. uh, for the amount that we distribute but we kind of like it that way right we like wearing a lot of different hats and just having it because it's you know it brings us closer and you know everybody knows what they got to do we get on it and we work together that's what it I is love every that. day it's perfect even the brewery dog yeah, yeah. coming in saying get it <laughs> there's a couple it. of them yeah. <laughs> the one thing i did forget to talk about was the employee owned i'll just break down what that looks like and, and how that works for uh switch back Heck yeah. Um, I mean, in terms of the day-to-day, it's kind of awesome because nothing really changes. Um, we were we were found that when we found out that we were employee-owned, well, I mean, the story of it is also that Bill scared the bejesus out of us. Yeah. And uh, we were having our annual meeting. And uh, he kind of, we were kind of coming to a close. And he said there was another reason we all were kind of gathered here today. Um, you know, I also, uh, I did sell the company. And I wanted to introduce you all to the new owners. And he did this little move to the door as if he was going to open the door and introduce someone to us. And everyone took their hats off and looked around like, like holy Toledo. We're going, going to Budweiser. We're going to Budweiser. Or yeah. some some big wigs buying us out, um, and then he faked that and said the new owners are you all, and you could hear the exhale in the room because oh it was there were tears it, from yeah. some people honestly because you know people have been here at that point for like six seven ten years. So to like hear that you were possibly going to go to somewhere like, you know, InBev or uh, Sapporo or just like the people that are just constantly buying up these other people out there because they realize that one day they're going to be in trouble. Not today, but one day, you know, still microbreweries only make up 9% of the brewing world, which is nuts. 91% is everyone else. Bud Light, Miller, Natty, all of them. It's crazy. So, you know, when you said competition earlier, are we afraid of like people opening up down the street you know coming in brewing beer no no we're welcoming because yeah. like that's just sticking that it to the rest of it, like keeps yeah. it going and the ESOP is you know just another addition onto that just to be you know you're really in charge of what you do on a day to day basis nothing is changing we're still doing it every day uh, but you just feel more a part of it you know like when you're leaving for the day you're checking like oh is this right is this right I just want to make sure you know this is my home this is my company and do you own stocks? Like, how, what, what is the... What so we get a certain amount of stocks a year, right? It's really complicated how it works. I'm pretty sure okay. the people that explain it yeah. to us don't even yeah. know. Um, <laughs> explain it like every... But we... Year. So what is it again? <laughs> we essentially take out a big loan out there, and then we pay down the loan each year by getting stocks as employees. So okay. eventually we'll pay that down fully, and we'll all have, like... A good stock in the like uh, a voting company. share, and exactly. Like, yeah, dope. And there's thirty something of you guys, right? So there's thirty like, of us in the stocks. Yeah, five or so. Yeah, right. So it's not like it's Five hundreds. Employees. It's like yeah, very yeah, close. Yeah, it's like a private, like, privately owned. You know, it's just us. So yeah. we're not like selling any public shares to anybody. And you just makes you, it's essentially like you said, nothing changed, but it made you feel more connected to the business and just a little bit more. Like even though you feel already like diligent, but that little, little bit more. This was always our home, but now it's our business as well. You know, it's 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 even more. It makes us come closer together as like that kind of family. As I said, a lot of people here wear a lot of different hats. They're doing a lot of different stuff on a day to day basis. 
uh, but we like it that way. You know, we all know each other here. We all trust each other. We're all employee owners. We all want to see each other and the company succeed. I love that. I think it's just really cool. It's not common enough. I've heard of it like Bose, I guess, in Ontario does it. Oh, yeah. I didn't think, yeah, they, they, it's very dope. I don't know of any others I can think of off the top of my head. It's just a very cool concept and I think it's like it does like the way you guys are speaking about it is exactly I'm sure the result that they were intending yeah like that sort of I'm sure like I said you already had that dedication but it just sort of doubles down on it and you just uh, give that little bit extra everybody wins I love it yeah and I mean being in you know being a a company that started in 2002 and also I think has brought us closer to the community too because they know that we're in it for Vermont we're in it for the south end of Burlington we're not going anywhere and we're still you know residents and neighbors that are doing our job here but are also aware of where we are and kind of really willing to connect to local businesses and and wanting to reach out and kind of create a little bit more of a community um, in that sense because we really care about what we're doing and we want to kind of make sure that it's affecting people positively right absolutely I love it. It's amazing, guys. That's pretty much it. Did we, did we cover everything? I don't know. I mean, there's always more beer to talk about. But. <laughs> there always is, right? <laughs> um, so make sure if you ever come down to Burlington, Vermont, this is where you need to be. Come through the tap room. Say good day. Uh, where can the good folks find Switchback and what? Like website, to Online? media. Oh, switchbackvt.com. If you're looking for our beer, we've got a beer finder on there. If you know your zip code plug it in um, if you don't look it up and then plug it in yeah. um, you can find our beer on draft in the can in the bottle as close as you can get it to your place so that's definitely the way to find it um, but definitely if you're in the south end of Burlington come, come on by and, and pay us a visit because we're here seven days a week oh so. yeah and social media is I switch back beer across switch everything pretty much yeah. Not, I love that consistency heck yeah guys thank you so much for your time absolutely really appreciate it heck yeah pleasure to meet you guys thank you um, guys if you enjoyed the episode mate smash the thumbs up hit subscribe below hit the notification bell so you know when the new new drops follow us on social media at BOS podcast and check out the long form audio so you can hear extraordinarily attractive human beings like these two right here talk about craft beer that is it guys we'll see you in the next episode get in here <laughs>